I would like to begin by reflecting quickly on this very kind of invitation to come here um, as an activist coming into a group of primarily researchers which is concerned with shaping a research agenda, field building in the sense of building a research field. And I feel so much honored that I have been invited to come here as an activist to give me the chance to influence this, to make it actually useful for me as an activist. Who wants to change the world? <laughs> so um, thank you for getting me here. And I will, I will really try to influence you, because that is what activists do, right? Uh, so um, I will. Um, another thing that activists do is to puff themselves up a bit and claim to have solutions. And I believe that is actually needed in this space. There is so much um, deconstructing going on that, that I feel there's a need to put forward solution proposals, being, of course, quite aware that there's a lot of uh, capacity here to be critical about it, and that is actually what we need. We have seen enough pseudo-development in the sense of some ideological um, fashion of this must be the solution and uh, putting it out in pilot projects and then celebrating a successful pilot project and celebrating successful reports written about it. And if that's all, I mean, nothing has been achieved. We have all seen plenty of that. So what I want um, to push for is to build this field. And um, I'd be incredibly um, bold and suggest that it should be named something other than network society. My proposal would be digitally intermediate society or even something like acceptable governance. I mean, best practices are so old when the best practice violate my human rights. <laughs> I, I, I'm not happy that it's the best practice. It's not even acceptable. So let, let's get back to basics and create something that is acceptable. And in order to be acceptable, it must respect human rights. It must allow every human being to concretely, practically experience their human rights. That's absolutely basic. One aspect of that, of course, it, it must be democratic. That, that's part of the human rights. If we don't have that, we have lost. And this is actually not just a struggle to achieve what has not yet been achieved, as Prabir has pointed out, we are seriously in danger of losing what has been achieved traditionally. I want to pick up one of the keywords of yesterday, which was complexity. Complexity of the, uh, the whole power structures in this digitally intermediate society. And they are really, really biting and hurting and disempowering the current democratic political systems. The struggle of inclusion, and I mean specifically inclusion in the democratic process, effective inclusion so that your concerns are actually going into the flow of the policy that comes out in a, in a real, concrete, effective way. Now, the struggle of inclusion is no longer only about the groups of people who have traditionally been excluded. It's no longer about the very poor and other segments of society that tend to get mar marginalized. Nowadays, even the middle class, the politically interested people who traditionally have been the locus of the democratic discourse, they are getting marginalized. In the internet governance discourse, 
they are totally excluded. The Internet governance discourse, it takes place in groups of techies, talking techie language that nobody will understand except the people who have wasted half their life on, in that kind of framework. And the corporations, of course, they are involved there. They have their lobbyists there. They have their technical change makers there. There are also independent techies there, although I would question how independent they really are, with the exception of early retirees who have some independence if they have been fortunate enough that they have a pension. With the exception of those, the techies are not only dependent on their current employer, but they are also dependent on not destroying their employability. So they will not um, take positions. They will not adopt mindsets that make them unemployable by one of the major employers in their field, which happen to be Google, Facebook, and all those companies that are the main causes of social injustice and problems. So putting the techies in charge is really putting the fox in charge of the hen house. We really have a struggle here. Now, I must stop talking about the problem because I want to get to the solutions. But I want to point out that there's a very excellent magazine called Third World Resurgence. I have four copies here. Um, for the first four people, take one. For everybody else, I have a link to a PDF. <laughs> so going to a solution proposal, what I'm going to talk about is a means of managing this complexity so that it will be possible to take back the democratic process into the mainstream where not only techies can deal with public policy but everyone. The approach that I'm talking about is real. It exists. It's being used in a quite different type of environment. It's being used for strategy development in firms. There is a community of practice of, I would guess, about a couple thousand people worldwide. It's not a big community of practice. It's not a very well-known method, but at least it exists. It's proven to work in a different framework. So as we have learned the hard way in the recent decades, you cannot simply transplant a method into a quite different environment. You have sort of learned from what works elsewhere and reconstructed, re-emerge it in a new f environment. And that is one of the things that really I want to propose as a significant part, hopefully, of this emerging research agenda to research how to re-emerge this complexity management methods that exist in other fields so that we can manage the complexities that we need to deal with in the public policy processes in order to make them work. Uh, quickly pointing out why complexity and inclusion are critically linked. Every new viewpoint that we introduce into the public policy discourse adds to the complexity. If we are not able to manage complexity reasonably well, we cannot include more than a small number of voices, at least a small number of significantly different voices. And that's really, in my opinion, the root cause of why the discourse has migrated to the techies. The techies think similarly, they communicate similarly, the complexity is reduced to a manageable level, I, manageable in the sense that they can manage it without specific methods and procedures for managing the complexity. If we want to get back in as activists, as citizens, we must insist that procedures are used that don't silence us 
and that still allow to reach reasonable results in reasonable time uh, while still dealing with this complexity. I have co circulated this morning uh, essay which talks a bit about logic trees. I will not attempt to, this, um, to explain them in any detail. I don't know why this... Anyway, I, I have an example here, but it's in the PDF that I sent. Look at it there. And if you're interested in uh, exploring this kind of method, and more importantly, figuring out how to re-enact, re-emerge, recreate complexity management that actually works in a different framework. That's really something that I feel very passionate about that needs to be done, that needs to involve both researchers on inclusion and activists who want to make it happen. So please continue in including us. Let's make it happen. Thank you.